Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you uh, for joining me here this morning. Nothing is more important to me than the safety of Ontario's workers. Workers are moms, dads, sons, and daughters, and all of them deserve our support to do their jobs safely. Essential workers are our frontline heroes. When our grocery store clerks, construction workers, truck drivers, bus drivers, nurses, and PSWs are safe and healthy, all of us are stronger. Workplace safety isn't only when you roll up your sleeves and are doing a job. Safety is just as important when you are on break, having lunch, or traveling between job sites. In fact, we've learned it is these off-the-clock tasks that are leading to workers getting sick. That's going to change with our new Stay Safe All Day campaign. Inspectors are now visiting the kitchen and the break room. They're reminding everyone to wear masks, maintain distance, and to wash their hands. Recently, I also announced the start of a province-wide big box blitz. We know that when big businesses don't follow the rules, everyone suffers. Over the weekend, inspectors checked 242 big chain stores in the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area to ensure all the rules were being followed. They found only 69% of these large businesses were doing what they were supposed to do. For these 76 contraventions, inspectors issued 25 tickets and 53 orders. This is truly disappointing. These corporations must do better. Shareholders have the responsibility to keep their workers and customers safe. I want businesses to know if they won't operate safely in this emergency, you won't operate at all. Our increased inspections combined with our Stay Safe All Day campaign means we're sparing no expense. We're getting hundreds of uniforms out there, fast to make sure businesses are acting responsibly. They're going to factories, shops, warehouses, distribution centers, construction sites, farms, and distribution centers. The first blitz starts today in Hastings and Prince Edward counties. After that, 10 more campaigns are being planned in Durham, Niagara, Windsor, Halton Region, Huron-Perth, Peterborough, Toronto, Kitchener-Waterloo, Hamilton, and Leeds-Grenville-Lanark. The number of inspections by ministry conducted in 2020 increased by 39% from 2019. Since the start of this pandemic, inspectors have made nearly 35,000 visits to workplaces to ensure safety is a top priority. I also want to recognize the important work being done on our farms. Our farm workers and farmers keep food on our tables. This is incredibly vital work that I can't thank them enough for doing. When you're on the job, whether you were born here in Ontario or you come from overseas, your safety is my business, period. This is why we're also ramping up inspections on farms with a focus on keeping temporary foreign workers safe. These inspections have the power to save lives. Lastly, I want to emphasize how important it is to stay home if you are sick. Thanks to an agreement between Prime Minister Trudeau and Premier Ford, there is over $1 billion dedicated for 10 paid sick days. This means there is financial help when workers need to stay home because of COVID-19. Maximizing this program is the best way to support workers and their families. To date, I've been told 110,000 workers have taken the federal government up on this offer. Unfortunately, only a quarter of the funds for this program have been used so far. But we know our federal partners are working to raise awareness and get money into workers' pockets faster. Combined with the Provincial Job Protected Leave we introduced as our first action last year, people's jobs and their incomes are protected. For months, I've told workers I would stand with them through this very, very challenging time. My commitment to them is unwavering. Together, we're going to beat this deadly virus. I want to thank you for your time and to remind you to stay home and stay safe. Thank you very much and happy to take questions. We'll go to the phone lines for questions. Uh, first question, please.
First question comes from Ashley Legasic at News Talk 1010. Please go ahead. Hi there. I hope you can hear me okay. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, Minister McNaughton, how are inspectors ensuring only essential staff are at workplaces? I've heard on social media from workers who say they're not essential, but because their employer deems them so, they're forced to go into work in person. Look, I want every worker uh, in the province of Ontario to know that they have the right to refuse uh, unsafe work. Um, I always encourage uh, people to work with uh, management, uh, their supervisors, for example, uh, and also the Joint Health and Safety uh, Committee in that local uh, business and in that workplace. Uh, if they have concerns, they can call our toll-free number uh, to the Ministry of Labour at 877-202-0008. Uh, my job is to protect uh, every single worker that's going into workplaces uh, right now during this 28-day uh, lockdown period uh, and beyond. We're obviously sparing uh, no expense. We have hundreds of inspectors going into uh, different job sites and workplaces to protect uh, workers uh, right now. Uh, but I want those workers to know that they can always call the Ministry of Labour uh, and uh, have someone respond to their concern. Follow-up? Thank you. And what workplaces are high priority in these inspections? Where do we know the problems are and how are those being addressed? Well, that's a great question. Um, we do take advice from local public health units, uh, municipalities, as well as com uh, we take complaints from uh, the public uh, at large. Uh, so we've designed uh, these blitzes. Uh, as I said, we have uh, a stay safe all day campaign where hundreds of inspectors are going uh, into essential workplaces and to construction job sites uh, right now. Uh, the list of uh, priority areas include distribution centers, uh, warehouses, uh, big box stores, construction sites and farms. And all of those um, uh, identified uh, job sites and workplaces come from local public health units and municipal concerns and of course uh, so some data that we have at the WSIB and in our ministry. Next question. Next question comes from Mo Fahim at Vista Radio. Please go ahead. Thank you, Minister. Um, I, 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 my, mine is less of a question or so. I, I missed the first couple of minutes. Would you mind repeating the first uh, couple of numbers uh, in, in your remarks? Sure, uh, we're uh, sparing no expense when it comes to protecting the health and safety of uh, workers across Ontario. Uh, we have hundreds of inspectors out in every community uh, going into uh, every type of business uh, that's open uh, during this uh, lockdown period. Uh, we wanna ensure that those essential workers are, are protected and that uh, businesses are stepping up to the plate. Uh, I wanna be clear and be uh, crystal clear to uh, businesses, to workers, to supervisors uh, and managers across the province. Everyone knows what they need to be doing uh, right now. We've put out as a ministry uh, about 200 resources at Ontario.ca forward slash COVID safety. This includes um, how to stay safe uh, on the job site uh, in workplaces, uh, includes posters and tip sheets. I'm proud to say we've translated a number of these documents into more than a dozen uh, languages so every uh, worker in the province uh, can understand and, and see these. Uh, we need everyone to step up now to be more vigilant today than, an, uh, than at any point during COVID-19 to keep uh, workers safe and we're taking action by sending hundreds of inspectors into uh, workplaces across the province. Follow up? Thank you. Um, um, just uh, just for clarification, uh, I meant uh, could you repeat the um, uh, the number of inspections that, that were done since your last update? And my, and my follow up is, is just simply um, um, I, under, uh, I understand I uh, yeah, understanding the the new locations that you the new regions that you announced today. Uh, when uh, do you, do you think this initiative would uh, or this increased initiative would reach northern regions and the and the province? Yeah, no, great, great question. So uh, to date, uh, we've done nearly 35,000 inspections in workplaces uh, since uh, March of last year, since COVID-19 uh, hit Ontario. Uh, we've uh, uh, shut down now, uh, as of uh, this morning, 61 unsafe workplaces and job sites uh, where our inspectors went in and determined that uh, workers were unsafe. Um, we are now uh, launching a number of uh, blitzes. Uh, we're into 242 big box stores, 
uh, across the GTHA on Saturday uh, and Sunday. We found only 69% of those big box stores were in compliance, uh, which is clearly uh, not good enough. Um, we are now going into big box stores uh, across the province. Uh, we're also going into distribution centers, manufacturing uh, plants, uh, farms, uh, going to construction job sites, uh, every uh, type of business that's open uh, during this 28-day uh, lockdown period to ensure that workers are protected. Next question. Next question comes from Sarah Moitahanzade. Please go ahead. Hi, hey, Minister. Um, last year, I know that the ministry um, conducted a number of proactive inspections in vulnerable sectors like agriculture, temp agencies, meatpacking plants. Um, but over the course of last year, I believe only one ticket to an employer was issued. Um, in the most recent blitz, you mentioned 25 tickets were issued. What's changed in your approach and why? Well, look, um, to be quite frank with you, businesses know now what they need to be doing. Uh, we certainly uh, were proactive in the early days of COVID-19, uh, going out, educating businesses. Uh, but when we see, for example, a, a big box blitz and only 69% of businesses uh, were in compliance, uh, it, it's not good enough. Um, our inspectors are going into every type of workplace uh, to keep uh, workers safe, to uh, enforce the rules and make sure uh, businesses are, are following uh, these uh, guidelines and these rules that are in place. And look, we've now shut down 61 unsafe uh, workplaces and job sites, six in the last uh, seven days. Uh, so clearly uh, we're taking a, a tough stand. Uh, but uh, my point here is that uh, I want to ensure that every uh, worker in this province uh, is protected from COVID-19. Follow up. Yeah, I want to um, return to the issue of paid sick leave. You mentioned um, the federal benefit, um, but that program is temporary, and the call from medical officers and other health advocates has been for permanent paid sick days, um, which so far it seems like, um, you know, the, the ministry and government is not, not willing to countenance. I'm wondering why that is. Why should workers not receive a day's pay uh, when, when they have to call in sick? Well, look, uh, it's a responsibility uh, as we're going through uh, clearly an unprecedented time with COVID-19. It's a responsibility of uh, every uh, leader in this province, whether it's a political leader, uh, a business leader, uh, a labour leader, to let workers know that this federal program uh, exists. Uh, our very first measure, as you know, Sarah, that we took when COVID-19 hit the province, I introduced legislation uh, that guaranteed every single worker uh, in this province, if they're impacted by COVID-19, if they're home in self-isolation, in quarantine, if they're looking after a, a son or a daughter because schools are closed, they're not going to be fired for that. I also eliminated uh, the need for uh, sick notes. I don't think workers need to be asked uh, for sick notes. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and Premier Ford sign an agreement, 10 paid sick days. We need to let workers uh, know that this exists. Uh, only 110,000 workers, I've been told, have taken the federal government up uh, on this offer. Uh, so there's uh, literally hundreds of millions of dollars uh, left for these workers. This is a program that's in place uh, now. Uh, I have spent uh, the last week or so on the phone uh, with uh, federal uh, ministers uh, imploring them to get these uh, payments out as quickly as possible. I think that's one of the improvements uh, we can make. Uh, but this is a, a federal program. They're administering this program. And if there are improvements to be made, then uh, the federal government's going to have to make those improvements. Next question. Question comes from Richard Southern at 680 News. Please go ahead. Good morning. Uh, the 76 contraventions you say the inspectors found at the big box stores, uh, what were they exactly? What were all the, these rules that big box stores were, were breaking? Yeah, great, great question. As I said, uh, 242 uh, inspections of big box stores just in the GTHA uh, this weekend, and we're now uh, expanding that blitz uh, right across uh, the province. Uh, some of the uh, contraventions that were found included, uh, including, uh, sorry, some of the contraventions found uh, included uh, physical distancing uh, not happening, uh, masking protocols uh, not being uh, followed. Uh, uh, in some cases, uh, we know that, for example, plexiglass uh, wasn't up between uh, customers and staff. So uh, a whole host of 
uh, infractions uh, occurred. I mean, 69% compliance uh, at this stage uh, in the pandemic is clearly uh, not good enough. Follow up? If the compliance is that low, Minister, how come no big box store has been shut down? And are you planning more restrictions for these uh, locations? Look, we're going to uh, continue uh, ramping up uh, uh, inspections in every type of workplace, including big box stores uh, in every community uh, across the province. Um, I uh, will share with you that there are a number of uh, investigations from the weekend that are ongoing, and we'll have more to say about that in, in the days and weeks ahead. Next question. Next question comes from Colin DeMello at CTV News. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, Minister. I'm wondering Colin. what the average fine was for these corporations that were found in violation of the rules. And is the government planning to name a any of these stores that were actually in violation of the rules so customers know, uh, you know, to be weary of uh, which business they're shopping at? Yeah, great, great question. Uh, every employer, uh, every business, every shareholder uh, in the province knows the seriousness of uh, violating the Occupational Health and Safety Act. In fact, the fines can be uh, as high as one and a half million dollars under the Occupational Health and Safety Act. Under the Reopening Ontario Act, uh, fines can be as high as uh, ten million dollars. Uh, we uh, issued a number of tickets to uh, big box stores uh, on the weekend, including, uh, you know, the, the big box corporations themselves, uh, supervisors and managers who are uh, clearly. Uh, in violation of uh, the protocols that are put in place. Uh, these fines range from $750 to uh, $1,000. But just to be clear, uh, as a ministry, we've now shut down 61 unsafe workplaces and job sites, six in the last week, uh, which hits uh, the bottom line of companies uh, in a very serious way, uh, as well as there are a number of investigations from the weekend, from the big box blitz that's uh, ongoing. And there'll be more to say uh, about that in the time ahead. Follow up. Uh, so, just to follow up on both questions, um, why won't you name any of these businesses that have actually been shut down? I mean, doesn't the public have the right to know that these places are in violation of rules that we're all following? And as well, if you're handing a corporation a thousand dollar fine, what really is the incentive for them to really, you know, get their their act together? A thousand dollars for a big corporation is a, a drop in the bucket compared to what they would make, you know, in a, in an average afternoon. Look, uh, you're right, but I want to be clear that uh, the fines are as high as $1.5 million. There are investigations uh, ongoing uh, right now. These take uh, time. Um, when it comes to uh, unsafe uh, workplaces, we'll continue uh, uh, without hesitation to shut down unsafe uh, job sites. For example, uh, six places were shut down in the last week, many of those uh, construction job sites. Every worker on those job sites uh, know that they were closed down and the public uh, is protected. So we'll continue to uh, send inspectors in to keep uh, people safe. But I want to uh, make it quite clear that overwhelmingly uh, the majority of businesses in Ontario truly have done uh, a good job. They've stepped up. It's the bad actors that we're focusing on now. And if uh, big box stores uh, are shut down, uh, any of them, uh, once these investigations are done, I can assure you uh, that uh, the public will know. Next question. Next question comes from Stephanie Marotta at Globe and Mail. Please go ahead. Hi, Minister. Thank you for taking Morning, my Stephanie. question. So my first question is about the inspection blitz that was done in the fall and comparing that to what it is that you're doing now. So in the fall, um, the province mentioned that the inspection blitz have a similar focus in going into workplaces and educating and enforcing that workers put in preventative measures. But we're hearing the same thing now, that worker, workplaces still aren't putting in flexibility and using masks and, and overseeing those types of things in lunch breaks, which are all things that we were hearing about a couple of months ago as well. So what did we learn about how breaks happened in workplaces during the, the blitz a couple of months ago? And why have those issues not yet been addressed in that they need to be uh, sussed out with yet another blitz now? Well, look, they are being uh, addressed. I can assure you uh, every single day in Ontario, I have hundreds of inspectors going into different workplaces. In fact, um, we now have uh, more inspectors in provincial history than at uh, any point before. We have more inspections today uh, than at any point in, in the history. So uh, 35,000 workplace inspections have been done. We've shut down 61 job sites and unsafe uh, workplaces, as I uh, mentioned. Um, the uh, things that we're seeing the most 
uh, in workplaces and a lot of tickets are being ordered, uh, being issued uh, because pre-screening of customers and staff uh, entering a particular workplace uh, isn't happening in, in some cases. Uh, the masking protocols aren't being followed as well as uh, physical distancing. Those are the three main infractions that we're seeing. Uh, but I can assure you uh, job sites and workplaces are being shut down uh, if necessary and we're uh, using every enforcement tool that we have uh, to enforce the rules. But at the same time, uh, we do uh, continue uh, educating uh, businesses and workers about the protocols. Follow up. And I wanna loop back again on these sick days. And I know you mentioned that you've been speaking with the federal government about ensuring that that money gets out faster, but that's not the barrier that we've been hearing about from workers. We've been hearing that um, they only qualify if they lose more than 50% of their hours, and that doesn't allow them to be able to stay home sick for a day. And we've also been hearing that um, the, the federal program doesn't pay them as much as their, their general job does. So they're losing money if they're, if they're staying home as it is, and that's preventing them from, from staying home while they're sick. So with that being said, why is the province not either creating its own paid sick day or looking at mandating paid sick days during the pandemic, seeing that the federal program doesn't seem to be substantial enough to, to get workers to stay safe. Well, look, the, the provincial responsibility was to bring in a job protection uh, leave, and that's what uh, we did. Our very first action when COVID-19 hit uh, the province, uh, the federal government stepped up to the credit to provide uh, $500 a week in, in sick pay. I uh, understand it's uh, obviously not as much as uh, workers are making uh, on the job, but clearly these are uh, unprecedented times. We have to get uh, to the point uh, when we're uh, mass uh, vaccinating uh, people uh, here in Ontario. Furthermore, I mean, our government has stepped up with billions and billions of dollars in relief for uh, workers, for families and for small businesses uh, across the province. Um, I, I think of the billions of dollars in hydro rate relief uh, for families uh, at this time. Uh, the, um, the checks that we've cut to moms and dads who have kids uh, at home um, we brought in protections uh, for uh, tenants uh, across the province. So uh, all levels of government have uh, worked together. We need to continue uh, to work together. That's why I have uh, reached out uh, over the last week. I have, uh, quite frankly, heard concerns that uh, payments from the federal government sick day program uh, aren't getting out uh, fast enough. That's why I've been working the phones and I know the Premier has uh, done the same and we'll continue uh, working with the federal government to uh, improve any program uh, that's necessary. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thanks everyone.